Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In case you're new here, my name is Maren. And I'm Maureen. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking about Uncle Sam. For those of you who don't know who Uncle Sam is, he sits in the Oval Office in the highest seat in America. So now you know who he is. And his prom queen, who is Zakayo. That is what at least he's called here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But Zakayo, for those of you who know the character Zakayo, he was Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus the tax collector in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And our very own Zakayo, he also sits uh, in a seat similar to Uncle Sam, but here in Kenya, right? Mm -hmm. So, he's Zacchaeus earned his name because of how heavily he's ta taxing Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And he recently went to America to dance with the... Uncle Sam in their in, in their prom night, you know, mm. they tr they were trying to make some beautiful African queens in quote African leaders feel jealous of mm. Zakayo. Mm. You guys, let me tell you something. Why is it that at this particular time mm. Kenya is such an important country when it when it comes to the West? Let so, me ask another thing. Mm -hmm. Why is it that? Kenya, let me not say Kenya because it's not fair to Kenyans because they're not in support of that. Mm. But why is it that the president right now is starting to poke his nose into in, other countries' in international affairs. conflicts? Exactly. Gangs and criminals do not have nationalities. Has Kenya become the new errand boy for the West? It's been barely two days since President Ruto returned from his state visit to the USA, where a major topic of discussion was Kenya's participation in combating gangs in Haiti. Now, latest reports indicate that Kenya has been drawn into another international conflict. The EU and the USA have selected Kenya to help combat the Houthi rebels in Yemen. These rebels along with Somali-based pirates have been terrorizing people along the Indian Ocean. According to the EU naval forces, Kenya's involvement is crucial in combating these maritime threats, which have been jeopardizing trade ties between many countries. But does Kenya really have the military strength to take on these challenges? During President Ruto's recent visit to the USA, the US invested heavily in Kenyan security, providing the following military support. 16 US helicopters, that is 8 Hughes and 8 MD500s, which are to be delivered between 2024 and mid-2025. The US also offered Kenya training for KDF at the US Military Academy, the US Naval Academy, and the U.S. Air Force Academy. The U.S. also promised to expand the Manda Bay Airfield with a 10,000 feet runway. Kenya also procured 150 armored security vehicles which are to arrive in Kenya in September 2024. The U.S.A. also designated Kenya as a major non-NATO ally. Additionally, for Kenya's security reforms, the U.S. gave the following funds. 900 million Kenyan shillings to strengthen the modernization and professionalization of the Kenyan National Police Service. Kenya also received 290 million Kenyan shillings, which is to improve conditions within Kenya's prison services. Kenya also received 198 million Kenyan shillings to support Kenya's electoral legal framework reform process. Now, these substantial investments have led to speculation that such gifts were not without strings attached. It appears Kenya might be expected to repay this support by taking on roles in international conflicts. Just days after President Ruto's return, Kenya was chosen by the EU and USA to combat the rebels in Yemen. But who are these rebels and how dangerous are the Houthi rebels? Now, the Houthi rebels backed by Iran have been active since the 1990s. Initially, they started as an Islamic military organization before evolving into an opposition movement against Yemen's president Ali Abdullah Saleh accusing him of corruption and receiving support from Saudi Arabia and the USA. 
America has started so many shit abroad, including starting wars, funding terror groups, you know, you name, you it. name it. You guys know what America has done. And now that uh, the world is catching on to America and they might potentially have a war in their um, doorstep, Uncle Sam sorts out Zakayo, you know? Mm -hmm. Since he can no longer be the face of all these wars that they start up in the world, he's taking a man who looks like us, with a skin like ours, to be the nation like uh, that has these, these these kind of people to go and start trouble for him for him. And Zakayo is all but too glad to go and do it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then mind you Uncle Sam and his counterparts are the very same people who've been pushing the narrative that black people are dangerous. TV programs have been pushing the narrative that black people are dangerous. Mm -hmm. And here we have Zakayo abiding by Uncle Sam's request to go and start fighting in international spaces. Places where, uh, to be quite honest, Zakayo has no business being there. Mm -hmm. He will just continue uh, uh, helping the pound colored people sell the narrative that black people are dangerous and they like warring with other people right you guys it's not it's not new news that um what the situation happening in haiti mm -hmm. kenyan soldiers have been sent there my question is what business do, does kenya have with them going all over crossing the sea to go and maintain peace in haiti what business that does kenya have right and if you notice haiti is way closer to america than it is to uh kenya and then America surpasses all uh, 54 or how many states in America to come all the way to Kenya to ask Kenya for help. Yet it has how many states in America? Mm -hmm. All of that. Mm -hmm. And then Americans themselves, mm -hmm. they surpass uh, South America, the whole of South America and the whole continent of Europe to come and land in a geographical location in Africa, it's which far is far Kenya, in the east. far, far in the, in, in the east. So they want to use black people to go and fight against mm -hmm. black people. Another and valid question we have to ask right, when you're analyzing this situation is mm -hmm. why South Africa was at some point considered one of the most developed countries in Africa, you understand? Meaning, mm -hmm. they ought to have had better infrastructures than Kenya. Education meaning, system. Education systems are better. Meaning, People their are army should be... More financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning, their army should be more sophisticated than Kenya. Mm -hmm. Why is it that South Africa doesn't have their army in Haiti, but... Or Yemen. Or Yemen. But Kenya is here, flexing its muscles, sending its soldiers to... Haiti. Mm -hmm. Why is that situation going on? So for those of you who don't know the internal um, affairs of Kenya, you know, there, there was a point where banditry was really a problem in the northeastern parts of Kenya, where we have uh, people who keep cattles, the, uh, what are they called when they migrate with cattle? Nomads. Nomads. People are being attacked, their cattle are being stolen, and that was quite a problem. To, I'm telling you, it was so bad that even the KDF soldiers themselves had to be deployed to the northern part, part of Kenya. And some of them were even scared to go there because the way, then they have guns, but those bandits had arrows. They had uh, only arrows. Shades. The bandits were just they were um, ruthless. Ruthless. Yeah. So and you we are wondering, these very same soldiers are being taken to Haiti to face someone like barbecue. Barbecue will barbecue them, like literally. Mm. So you tell me, such kind of decisions when they are being made, if Kenyans are not okay with this, because if, even if you go to social media, Kenyans don't want this happening. Yeah. So you tell me, why is it that our president is taking these soldiers, and right now I'd hate to be a man serving you know, in the army, mm -hmm. because on social media, even some people are saying, can you imagine you have a father, you have a brother who is in the army, and they mm -hmm. were going on ahead to put themselves in that situation, saying, if it were me and I was a soldier, I would quit my job. But yeah. let me tell you, you, you the don't problem just with quit. that is in Kenyan army, you don't just quit. You have especially to if uh, it's under ten years uh, since you were recruited in the army. Mm -hmm. After being recruited in the army, you're supposed to mandatorily serve for ten for ten years. years, so that the government can consider. 
letting you go right and this is because basically when they take people to train they normally train them and they for cater free. for everything if it's education if you, let's say they're going to be pilots in the army mm -hmm. they government takes care of that if you're going so, to be a nurse in the army the government takes care of that so you so in short they them. invest in you so they have to rip uh you know to get the benefits. benefits yeah so they take 10 years from you right. so imagine this is your first year of serving the government and then since they have 10 years of your life they decide you're going to Yemen and then you guys let me just ask you just a logical question what is what is what's the kind of situation that is Yemen that makes Kenya the Kenyan president believe that his army can conquer that situation? If it's so conquerable, why, why don't they the take the army, army? Yes, go there exactly. because America already doesn't have good credit with the public. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, if Zakayo really wants to show how militarily advanced Kenya is. Why doesn't he take his troops to Congo? Mm. Congo is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. instead of going to prognose his big, uh, himself in other people's business in Haiti or going to prognose himself in other people's business in Yemen. Mm -hmm. You know, now, should he fail to successfully combat the problems that are in Yemen and Haiti? Mm -hmm. Now we'll have Haiti as enemies. Mm -hmm. We'll have Yemenis as enemies mm. and the rebels in uh, Yemen. Already we have Al Shabaab as enemies because Kenyans also poke nose. Of which, for no, the ones from Mali, I really understand that was no, valid because it was beginning it was also to affect Kenya. Exactly. You know, they were crossing over to this side and doing terroristic activities that. They, Yes, those ones. So Kenya really had to put them in their line. Mm -hmm. But Yemen, you, mm -hmm. how is Kenya even connected to Yemen? No way. You so guys, let me tell you taking the, the um, forces to Yemen. Mm -hmm. ALU. Another, another thing, you guys, is I have to put this across. You know when that thing was going on in Somalia and Kenya had to get involved because if you remember what happened at Westgate Mall, it was very it was a very famous case that Kenyans still remember up to date, right? right. So they had to take our soldiers there. Yeah. And um it wasn't just a one time job. It's something they had to keep on working on, working on, working on. And let me tell you there are soldiers who came back who were left traumatized to day to this this day they, they have never, never recovered. recovered. So you tell me they go to Haiti, they go to Yemen, the kind of things they're going to say to, to face hey, there, and then they come me, back. I'm telling you, Kenya doesn't have a proper a proper way to when when soldiers come back, they don't have a like, proper way to give them help so that they or, can tackle their PTSD exactly or reintegrate them back, back into, into society. society. So Kenya what doesn't have sufficient, at least not that we have seen, right? Because there was a soldier who, who came from Somalia who was saying when they came back, he was just left like that. This guy had PTSD, so he became, became a, a drunkard, drunk. lost his wife because he became violent. violent. Anything triggered him, you understand? Right. And his life was just wasted Ruined like that. that. A shadow he started of doing hard, uh, hard drugs. Mm -hmm. Yes, he but became a shadow of the person he, he used, used to be. So you tell me what they're going to face in Yemen. And Yemen, you heard that those rebels consist of um, people who are being supported by Iraq. Was it Iraq? Iraq or Iran? One, one of those, those two countries. countries. So, and then, you know, and, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm wondering, not to... Okay, I'm wondering. Let me wonder. So if barbecue gets a hold of just one Kenya, mm. one Kenya, mm. You know he's going to milk information from that guard before kill, <clears throat> analyzing them. And the way they'll be analyzed, I don't even want to imagine. Because you guys, if you remember the story of uh, the, the girl who was kidnapped, she was from US and she was in with her husband. Mm -hmm. She was a daughter of a politician. I don't know if he was a congressman or a mayor from US. Mm -hmm. And then she went to Haiti as a missionary with her husband. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the gang... The gang got hold of her. Oh. They were tortured. Imagine on this. I uh, saw so the the father. I don't know if if he's a congressman or a mayor. He kept asking uh, for help, and then he uh, he was also negotiating with the terrorists, asking them what he could do so that they could let the daughter and the son in law go. You know, but the rebels didn't want anything. They tortured uh, the daughter and the to son an to serve example. as an example, and they ended up analyzing these people. I did execution see that. style. Oh, it was all over TikTok. Oh. I saw it this week. Yeah.
Oh my, she died. So you guys, now Kenya, Kenya as, you imagine they had the guts to analyze a politician's daughter. Mm. What is a mere KDF soldier who is... Uh, KDF, for those who don't, don't know, is an oh abbreviation yeah. for Kenya, Kenya Defense, Defense Forces. Forces. Yes. So if they get their hands on one like this, a nobody Kenyan defense soldier whose parent, mm. parent is a farmer and a... I'm not trying to degrade anybody mm. <laughs> whose parent is a farmer and uh, yes, you you get the image I'm trying to mm. to to paint. This U.S. congressman, he could have been easily able to raise funds to uh, pay for ransom, mm. although they didn't want his uh, mm. money. So imagine if uh, this KDF's parents, the farmers, are told uh, we want this and this X amount for your daughters or your sons. Will they be able to meet up with people like barbecues demands? These soldiers will be they'll come back here looking like something else. Mm-hmm. You guys, I don't know what you think about this, but let us know about your opinion on the comment section. But my stand still uh, I still stand on the same point of view. Mm-hmm. Kenya has no business uh, meddling in international uh, what, what is it called? Unless the stages, unless the international warring stages are in Africa. Mm-hmm. But you guys, do you mm-hmm. know much as we say this Kenya has been given, as you've seen in the videos, we've been given some goodies. 200 yeah, million goodies. for this, 190 million for this, for that. For that. It's, not for free. it's not for free, yes. And these monies will find very good uses in someone else's pockets here in, here in Kenya, you know. Mm. So they're paying dearly for these goodies that they've been given. And one of the payments is to take the soldiers all the way to Yemen. Mm. And you know, you just wonder, why are the uh, EAU countries, the Arab Arab countries, mm. why they're in very close proximity to Yemen than um, Kenya? Kenya yeah. Why are all of them not being sent to Yemen to solve the situation there. Mm-hmm. Only the boot licking Kenyan Kenyans. Kenyans. And we don't mean the citizens. We don't mean the citizens because the citizens don't got nothing to do with it and they don't want nothing to do with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The boot lickers know who they are. Mm-hmm. It's not a must to mention them. And since we've not mentioned them, whoever will think it's them. As we've not said anybody, so in Africa, in Kenya, they say Mwenyemafi Hujishuku. So translation of that is, let whoever didn't wipe his, you know, behind well, the one who has faces, they, they, they will know who they, they will are. know how they smell. <laughs> so that's all we have to say oh about this goodness. issue. Yeah, but you guys, Kenya has literally, we're just a peaceful country existing in the far east of Africa. We just don't need problems, but the way yeah. the, the way we are being led and the way sucked into Kenya is becoming, fam- you know, it, at some point like Kenya, we were very happy, we were flexing. The, uh, Kenya having the best marathoners is something to flex, flex about. about. That I would very much say so. Yeah. But how do we even begin to flex about taking our 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 military to a black nation like Haiti or to uh, an Arabic country like Yemen, yeah. how do we even begin to and you that mind you, flex? Arab countries they're really racist towards black they people. Are. So let them just catch a poor bastard with my skin color. Ooh, they go, they're they going to work on you real good. Yeah, Arabs are very racist. They are very, very racist. And then you guys, let me tell you, they've been driving this um, <coughs> narrative, when you talk about racism, right? they've been driving in this narrative that you know black people are violent mm-hmm. black people we are like the peddlers of all evil things mm-hmm. we are that the is best we are the fathers and mothers of all evil, evil things. things that's visual what representation and now everything is evil the devil is evil yeah. black male has the word black in front of in front of it you're wondering where it originated mm-hmm. so everything bad has black on it yeah and then you you know yemenis i and don't you know believe a lot of them have, have, have encountered with black, black, black people. people and then the first encounter a, yemenis a child has, a child sees it's my black face pointing a pew pew at them mm-hmm. and let me tell you guys you know for a kid um casualties of war mm. even the innocent get caught in the in crossfires so you right. imagine a child from yemen sees a black person with a pew pew pointing at their father and their mother is already on the ground because you know they did the thing with the pew pew so you tell me this kid growing up what is going to motivate that kind of individual if that people if they don't... decide to hate people of our skin color mm-hmm. 
So, you know, right now America can't use a white face to attack Yemen. Mm-hmm. So when they use a black face, it's gonna represent black people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if this face is from Kenya. It doesn't matter if that face is from where. Where in in front of this Yemen child who will be they won't seeing these people, they won't distinguish this was a. They just continue believing in the narrative that's being pushed that all. Oh, People, all people of my color are bad people. Mm. You all because of the green of people guys, in the government. Everybody right now knows that Kenya is a bootlicking country. Mm-hmm. We are then, the er, we are we are the errand boy for Uncle Sam. Mm. And did you? We are the you guys, did you say? Sam. Did you see the state? Did you guys see the state dinner that that was held for Zakayo? Did you guys see three pres- three American presidents were present in this state dinner? You for wondering what and for why? You're wondering is Kenya really that important? Is, it, it gives me hibijibis. No, Kenya is not important. Not any palm colored person. Anyway, you guys, you know Hillary, uh, Bill Clinton was there. You know Barack Bar- Obama was there, and you know the current training president was there, Uncle mm. Sam. So you guys tell me. Is I Kenya think they were just important? trying to parade Zakayo in front of so that the other African countries could see because you remember that uh, amongst these African countries there are those who are siding with uh, Putin in mm-hmm. Russia. Mm-hmm. So I think this Great was a display. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So I think they were just displaying their what they discovered was their beautiful prom queen mm-hmm. in front of the other queen so, so that they know Kenya is where Kenya stands. stands. And what does second, what mean? does an NATO ally even mean? One of the strongest in NATO that they don't even respect. Not that we want that to happen, Tito. but you they don't, even don't want, want anything from them. Right, but they don't from even their dollars. Yeah, so mm. I'm guessing that's why Zaka is up all over other people's business. So you guys, um, South Africa is with Russia. They, they Senegal is it? South Africa is with Russia. Then the Brits. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Look at what what's happening in the West of Africa. In the West of Africa, Russia is even more welcomed mm-hmm. than, than the West. So, anyways, all said and done, guys. What we're trying to say is, right now, Kenya is creating enemies that, in the first place, it doesn't need. And because secondly, instead of focusing on issues at home. Citizens in Kenya, they're not really thrilled with the decisions that the government have been making, mm-hmm. you know. At the end of the day, when we send our soldiers, I, I don't know, everywhere across the world, these are things, definitely we are interfering with other countries, right? Mm-hmm. And these are things that are going to impact our country, if not today, if not tomorrow. Because somewhere in future, we are going to reap the fruits yes. of the actions we are doing right now. Yeah, because right now... Whoever are in government in America right now, they might parade themselves as our friends. But when Kenya uh, gets into trouble, it will have lost other countries that would have been potentially their friends mm. because they were doing the dirty bidding of one country. Mm. You know. Mm. So only time will tell with uh, the new direction that our Zakayo is trying to take the country. Mm-hmm. But along the way, what mo- most definitely is. We are, the more we continue to do this, the more enemies will be creating in the way our future. Like right now, mm-hmm. but let us leave it there, guys. You let us know what you think about this episode. What do you think about Kenya sending their soldiers into Yemen? Like anyway, just let us know what you think about this. And we want to thank you so much as usual for catching our episode. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, please kindly remember to do so. And we'll see you on our next episode.